Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News, the unreliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the newsroom and welcome to the Gautopia News Network, your unreliable source for DSP News. This is the Snort Report. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with one of our favorites, Snort Brunel, DSP Gaming. Great return next Sunday to raise funds. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, I mean to answer questions. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is supposed to be uh, a special podcast, if you will, uh, a, a form of pig explaining, if you will, that Phil is going to be uh, that he's going to be hosting when he comes back uh, next week. Actually, after his vacation with Cat to go back home to Connecticut to a place that he hasn't been in like three plus years, uh, will he go out there and excuse me visit some friends? Uh, maybe get reacquainted with John and Howard. Maybe try to make amends. I don't know. That's what most men would do. But Phil isn't exactly, uh, he isn't exactly a man, is he? Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, he's coming off of two begathons, which were complete and total failures. You guys know that because we talked about that in the last broadcast. So I don't expect too much out of it. In truth, he was yet again. I mean, the the whole point behind going home was supposed to be visiting his sick and dying parents. I mean his parents that are fine but they could eventually get sick and take a turn for the worst any given day now. And also they're paying for everything. It's all on their dime. Hence the reason why Phil's going. Well, Phil and Cat are going. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't expect Phil to do much of anything out there except for eat and take Cat to all the same places he used to take Panda. That's basically it. I don't see much of anything else happening. Uh, but at the same time, though, too, here at at, uh, at GTG Network and Productions, Phil has been known to surprise. So keep all that in mind moving forward. Let's go ahead and hear what he has to say about the situation. Maybe we can get some laughs out of it. And end of that. You know what I'm saying? It, he's, it's Phil, yet again, using other people's good graces to benefit himself. A couple of weeks ago, he couldn't afford to go on vacation because even not only could he not afford the trip, but he couldn't afford to miss work. Now the trip's on somebody else's dime and he's okay with missing work. Uh, okay, whatever. So, <laughs> so let's just go ahead and make the best of this as uh, we usually do. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are doing well. And it's time to go ahead and get into this proper. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for showing up. This is the Snort Report and this is DSP News, always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG, Network and Productions. You guys all know the slogan. And I don't smell no bacon cooking yet. I don't smell no bacon cooking yet either. Which means, which means, especially since it's gonna be gone for like a week. It's time, it's time to watch me work. is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? All right, that's, sounds good to me. But uh, my body is exhausted. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yet again, we are here at one of our favorites, Snorpernell, DSP Gaming. Great return next Sunday to raise funds. I mean, answer questions. Let's go. My mind is exhausted. I feel like, oh man, after yesterday, yesterday was great, by the way. Yesterday was a great session, a good, a good marathon stream that I did, and people came out and were supportive. It was really good. So again, I want to just say to everybody, thanks for the money, dummies, because that's exactly what you fucking are, a bunch of fucking empty-headed idiots who paid me money to get absolutely nothing out of it. Thanks. 
Wow. Uh, it was just like, my God. And I woke up this morning, I felt like I didn't get any sleep. I was like, man, I just feel so drained from basically working my ass off these past, you know, few weeks. As you guys know, I've been trying to raise funds for my taxes. Now, let's talk about that for a minute. So, <laughs> I felt exhausted for working my ass off, you know, these last couple weeks. When yesterday, or, yeah, yesterday, which was supposed to be a 12-hour stream, right? Supposed to be a 12-hour stream. Really, it was only 8, which is basically a normal work day, to be honest. N he didn't do anything different. He really didn't. He set it up to give you guys the understanding and the belief it's 12 hours. But in truth, given you add all his breaks up and everything like that, it was a normal work day, to be honest. Nothing came out of it. <sighs> Excuse me. It's early. Also, on top of that, and I haven't had my cappuccino yet. Um, on top of that, the fact that he only came up with about $13,000 out of the 5000 is not necessarily a complete success if you look at it that way if you think about the previous begathon that puts him up to about 24 2500 dollars out of the 5000 so he's walking away with at least half so it's a nice bit of padding for uh his this vacation he's about to go on i mean his taxes i mean that's what this money was supposed to all go to his taxes and even if it doesn't he can say wholeheartedly that it's, it's pretty good padding for the week that he's going to be gone. Let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen. The viewership is dwindling. Tips, subs, uh, bits and cheers have been low. $2,400 isn't a pretty bad, isn't a bad take. And whatever he can drum up on YouTube while he's gone for the week. Just my personal opinion, of course. But yet again, Phil, in his own words, worked hard, worked his ass off, and now he's so exhausted. Gotcha. And really been, you know, going balls to the wall. You know, with a game like Sekiro, that's a game that normally I probably would have lost my mind playing, but I've really dedicated myself to learning it and playing it and persevering because... It's been bringing people out to the streams, right? And I'll be very honest, it's been bringing contributions to the streams. So I'm like, fuck it. Even though this game, combat isn't my cup of tea, I will still tough through it and get through it and keep going because this is what people want, right? This kind of shit needs to come out this kind of shit needs to be exposed for what it is it's greed actually if i remember correctly he actually made the bulk of that money um during the pre-stream and the sekiro or sekiro uh part of the actual marathon which was at the beginning everything else tapered off after that so that's kind of uh that's kind of telling which in truth he should have just done a full marathon of that game but he said he didn't want to because he wanted to bleed it out later so uh that's the <laughs> that's the professional businessman at work, ladies and gentlemen. Make of it what you will. It's greed. Greed is massively strong. I have no fucking self control. All right, so um, I'm not doing a late stream tonight, guys. Ultimate laziness. All right, and I apologize for that. I do. I know that maybe uh, you guys are you know we're anticipating a final session of Sekiro before we went headed out here. I get that. I totally get that. Um. And, you know, it is what it is. And why wouldn't you do it? The game that brought you in the most money the day before is the game that you're supposed to be playing tonight, which is supposed to give you, which will probably bring in maximum amount of money. Well, at least that night. Sorry. You know what I mean? Um, it's going to bring you the maximum amount of money. You're just playing a game and you're going to fail at it. You could literally, you could literally, you know what I'm saying, sandbag it for three hours and be fine and still get your money. Outside of Swaggins being a bitch, you should generally be all right about the situation. I, I, you have no reason not to. Aren't you going on vacation the next day? So what's the big deal? And like Snorper now said, you're about to. You're supposedly on the verge of losing your house. You're going to lose a week of pay, despite the padding that you that you know you earned before that. But yet this idiot still can afford to take a day off. Yet again, going back to my previous point about how he couldn't go out there to visit his parents, period, in the beginning, because he couldn't afford to miss a week of work. What's one more day, not even one more day, ladies and gentlemen, what's an extra three hours that night going to hurt him? On his birthday night, that he's been basically hyping up for the last two weeks or so. What is three more hours? That would be, to be honest with you, that would be a perfect send-off. 
a perfect chance for him to maximize the amount of money that can be made that night. I don't know. He's the businessman, I guess. <laughs> DSP News. Sometimes things don't work out as planned. This is one of those cases where I'm just so exhausted that there's no way that I know I could do this. Uh, you know, I could do this today. So, so that's the deal. All right. Um, thank you to the people who understand. Some people in the stream chat right now are saying completely reasonable. Uh, you know, enjoy, you know, do what you need to do. And they understand. And there's other people who are being jerks. Oh, but you just play games for a living and you only stream nine hours a day, Phil. So this is ridiculous. All right, whatever. <laughs> Seriously, whatever. I know what's best. For, for what's going on now, and I would much rather do things right and end up having a good trip than fucking everything up for the sake of doing one final stream because a few people are just basically just being very, 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 very uh, entitled. Let's say it. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's talk about his entitlement for a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and ride for you guys for just a second. He's saying that you guys should have no right to demand three more hours out of him. He knows what's best for him and for the stream and for his business and for his life. And the key word of all that, the trip. So, you know, he's going to do what he wants to do. Wait till he gets back. Wait until he gets back and he's going to come to you guys begging and pleading on piggy hoofs for every drop of money he can get out of you. Wait until that happens and be like, well, Phil, remember what happened when you left? You know what I mean? Last week, and you said that you knew what was best for the business or whatever. Sorry, Phil, but I don't feel a need to donate to you today. I might want to just go ahead and wait till tomorrow or later on the week. Sorry, Phil. I'm doing the best for myself. That's what you guys should say. I don't know what you'll say, but that's what you guys should say. Seriously. Because if he's going to go ahead and talk down to you guys right now and say that what you guys want doesn't matter, despite the fact that he... It was in his schedule, so theoretically, eh, I won't say he promised. I won't actually say that. But it was scheduled in, right? It was scheduled in. Excuse me. And now he can't for, he can't come through on what would be considered, and I use this term loosely, his business uh, obligations. You know, you shouldn't feel any more obligated to give him money when he gets back. And you know when he gets back he's going to ask for money because he's going to be short for the week. So, as far as I'm concerned, whatever's what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Just wait him out. Just bleed him out, basically. Because he tried to pry at these people today, ladies and gentlemen, in the hopes that when he gets back, everybody's just going to roll out the red carpet and just throw money at him that they've been saving up for the whole week. You know what I mean? And that's not going to happen. And it's, it's just another example of being unrealistic, but more importantly than that, living on the backs of other people. You know what I mean? A, a person's generosity is one thing. You should never take advantage of that. But he's expecting this when he gets back. He feels entitled to their money when he gets back. Because, guys, I was gone for a week. You know, me and my parents are spending time with Kat. This, that, and the third. You should understand that. And on the basis of, on the basis, sorry, of understanding that, you should just pay me that money. You should. You were going to give it to me last week anyway. So just go ahead and give it to me now. Stop asking questions. Just, just give me the money. Just give me the money. You know that's... It's, he's not going to say it that way because he's, he's not that stupid. He is stupid, but he's not that stupid. But that's how the conversation is going to work itself out. And the thing is, Phil, is that as time has gone on and as watching your decline just this year alone, it's very, very apparent in the first four months of the year that you can't sustain this. This, this year is going to be the hardest year, I think, of your career, and I use that term loosely. It's going to be extremely hard. And I don't, and to be honest, I don't think you're man enough to, to rise to it. I don't. I don't think you're built for it. I'm pretty confident that you're not. And you're already turning away the very resources that you're going to need later. Now, that's just my personal opinion, of course. I'm just a brain-dead detractor. But at the same time, your 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 decline has been very... Uh, your decline has been very pronounced. And it would be dishonest that people in the audience, fellow detractors, fellow trolls and haters, people on Kiwi Farms as well as Twitter have predicted this in a number of different ways. And though each one of our paths have been different, we've all made it to the same destination. 
which ironically enough will be your final destination. Yeah, just saying. DSP news. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god. Remember I told you about the false copyright strike I got against Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove? It's been completely cleared up and removed. It took one day for YouTube to actually review the situation and realize they had no idea what the fuck they were doing and reverse the copyright strike because it was completely bogus to begin with and the channel is now back in good standing with no issues. Not that, not that the channel means really anything, but I mean you are making your $50,000 a year on it, so it is what it is, I guess. Uh, question though. Weren't you spurging out on Twitter about that shit? And what? Like, you're, it was going to get cleared up either which way. And yet, you, yet again, felt the need to go out there and spurg it all up. Make yourself look like an idiot. And so what? To get a couple of pennies on a playthrough that no one's really going to watch anyway? On a game that most people, at least within your fan base, don't even remember? What <laughs> this is what I this is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Where he's someone who's fighting for every not even fighting, he's bitching for every little thing that he has, and he's not smart enough to realize that some things are just not worth fighting for. YouTube was going to clear that up as soon as he put in his um, as soon as he uh, he put in what's the word I'm looking for? I'm sorry. Damn, it's early. Uh, as soon as he put in his his request for review, you know what I'm saying? It, it was going to it was going to be, they were going to take a look at it, see if it was valid, and then dismiss it if that's the case. What is he worrying about? I understand that you can't suck from or you can't lick or you can't suckle. I should say is probably the word. You can't suckle from Machinima's teat anymore or curse. Wow, you just you ain't failed twice. Um. I understand that you can't do any of these things, but YouTube is still there and they'll still get it done for you as long as you have that blue check or you could be like Monday Matt and then lose that and then you really have nothing, but you're not there just yet. Then again, it's, you haven't paid for subs like Monday Matt either. Womp womp. So anyway, this is my final stream. All right. Um, and I'll be back. Um, next Sunday, so a week, I'm actually going to be gone for exactly one week. When I return next Sunday, the first thing I'm going to be doing, just because I know this is going to be worth doing, a special podcast at 10.15 a.m. Pacific time, that's going to be Sunday, April 14th, and the purpose of the podcast is to be a recap of my trip. I'm going to t talk to you guys about everything that I did on this trip, you know, what Kat and I did, what we did with my parents, and all of that, answering questions, um... And basically having a fun interactive kind of session where we just talk about this visit this visit um to get it out of the way because i know people are going to have questions you know every time something like this happens for the next you know several several days to weeks i get questions so rather than have those questions bombard my streams for you know weeks just do a special podcast that answers everyone's questions all right and it'll be fun it'll be a good way to get back into stuff instead of immediately jumping say back right into secure or whatever instead it'll be a more relaxed atmosphere um it'll be more of me just talking on stream with you guys and kind of relax. Okay, let me cut in. First off, basically what he's saying is, is he doesn't want to have to jump back into playing video games right away. That's what he's really saying. Which, to be honest, you should just go to IRL streaming anyway. He doesn't have to leave his house. He should just talk to the audience. He should just do that. Just my personal opinion. Secondly, Phil, you're going to see your ailing parents... And you're going to eat a bunch of food and you're going to go to a bunch of haunts and a bunch of places you took Panda that might not even be there now. And that's it. The best thing that should come out of this trip, if you're man enough to actually reach out to John Howard, introduce them to your girlfriend, Kat, and try to make some type of amends with the people that live out there. If they're still living there, I should say. That should be the best bet. You're not going to do that. I, I Fuck it. You're not going to do that. I know you're not. So, what else is there to say? You're going to talk about all the different restaurants you went to? All the, 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 what, two restaurants that they have in Connecticut that are Italian? I assume there's more restaurants around there than that. 
And I'm sure there's better food around there than just Italian food. Especially for someone who's not Italian. You're Polish. Not to say that you can't like Italian food. I like Italian food, and I'm not Italian. But you you stick into this this notion that you're Italian and you're not just seems silly. But whatever. I mean, it's what it is. Everybody has to have their bag, I guess. Um, <laughs> I guess everybody has to have their bag. But uh, what else do you expect out of this trip? What else do you expect to be so damn relevant that people want to hear what you have to say? You're just flying. You're flying across country to fucking talk to to spend time with your parents and shit. And probably beg them for some money. Which you probably don't even need to beg them for money. They'll probably give you money off the rip anyway. Because, you know, he talked to his parents once a week, you see. And they know about all his problems. They know all about us haters by name. You know what I'm saying? I'm surprised that his mother doesn't have a shrine to Almighty Tevin and Snort Burnell as soon as they walk into the house. To be honest, if Phil tells, you know, his parents about everything, I'm just, I'm just saying, realistically speaking, you know, it is what it is. So, I mean, what else do you expect to come out of that trip? It's not going to be anything, like I said, it's not going to be anything special. So it certainly shouldn't be anything uh, to any type of, there shouldn't be any type of conjecture when you, uh, conjecture, when you come back. To be honest, unless you have something planned in particular, and I doubt you're going to do that. You're not in the sport, so you're not going to go out to any games. I think he says something about he has a thing with heights or he has a thing about going on roller coasters and shit. So you're not going to do that. I mean, you don't do anything fun, to be perfectly honest with you. And you have gout, so you can't do a whole lot of walking outside of going around in the mall like you were some 60-year-old dude. What else are you bringing to the table, Phil? I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. <laughs> Let's continue. Sing. And, and going from there, all right? So that's going to be my return on April 14th. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm eating pasta. There's penne in my pasta. I don't care. I don't fucking care. In fact, I'm eating pasta today. This stream right now is pretty much your absolute final chance to contribute to my tax effort. What I mean by that is tipping me today, whatever tips you guys, you know, give me today on my birthday stream here, will go towards the taxes. And it's hopefully going to help because I have raised some money. It wasn't the full amount that I needed to be 100% sure that I'd be safe for this year. So we got to see what happens. I'm going to be talking to my tax guy about what I did raise in the past couple of weeks. But in the interim, today is the last chance if you absolutely want to contribute to help with these taxes. Okay, wait a second. So, so I'll be safe for the year. Since when have you started collecting money to cover your taxes for the whole year? I thought we were doing this in increments to cover the quarter. Well, each quarter respectfully, I should say. And to cover all of 2018's back taxes that you didn't pay for. I thought that's what all this is for. On top of that, where's the Emerald 7 money? On top of that, where's all the other money that you've been collecting throughout the year um, to help with this effort? And on top of that, since you didn't pay any of your back taxes, sorry, since you didn't pay any of your regular taxes in 2018, where's all the money that you drummed up for, ta for alleged taxes throughout 2018's year? And you can't come off and say some silly shit like, oh, I used it to pay bills because you were still getting paid or you're still getting paid by YouTube and Twitch. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, but there's just a whole lot of money missing. And there's not a whole lot of answers being thrown out. Just saying. So, some clarification would help. DSP News. For your tipping me, okay? I appreciate that very much. I e-bag, right? You're constantly asking your viewers and your fans for contribution. Phil's just a, one of the worst e-beggars. I may be, I may be living month to month, paycheck to paycheck, begging for fucking tips and shit on stream for the rest of my life. And hilarious that I do this for a living, right? And I make way more money than Tevin, even though I have way less viewers. Let's think about that for a second. <laughs> Then we move on to Big Boy Abide, who cheered and said, Good day, Phil. Do you find it funny you were recently proven right regarding... Here's the thing. And, and I've been thinking about this for a little while. So, <sighs> Phil says, I wake more... I, Phil says, I'm sorry. I make way more money than Tevin, though I have way less viewers. Yet, Tevin does not have to beg or plead or try to uh, con people basically out of their money. And you do, you do this on a regular basis. And on most of Tevin's streams, he makes more money than you do just off of the principle. 
just off the fact that people want to make sure that Tevin, <laughs> that Tevin makes more than you on a stream. He doesn't ask for that. He doesn't endorse it. He doesn't do any of those things. He just sits back and chills and money just kind of comes in. LSB is starting to get up there too with that. And neither one of these men have ever mentioned anything about money. And yet, you have to do this shit every day. Every day. And where is it getting you in the long term? Yes, you have be you have begged another day. But then you have to go back and beg tomorrow. And the day after that, and the day after that, and the week after that, and the week after that, and then the month after that, and the month after that. You're not winning any small battles in a in a, a, a five or six second clip that's going to be on YouTube and Twitter saying some dumb shit like that. It just makes you look petty. And on top of you looking petty, it just makes you look stupid. Because nothing truly comes out of it. So what the hell are you even laughing for? He's the one, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna sit there and beg for money. He's gonna go to. He's gonna go. He's gonna get off. Uh, get off his stream later on. Count up his shekels. Go to bed, failing, and then wake back up to the same failure bullshit over and over and over again. And the only comfort that he has, at least so it seems, is that oh, I make way more money than Tevin, despite the fact that I have way less viewers. That's it. That's the, that's the only thing that puts one hoof in front of the other, huh, Phil? That's the only win that you have over Tevin? At all? Not the 10 years, you know what I'm saying? Not the two homes and shit that neither, not, if, not, not as if either one of them are paid for. You know what I'm saying? Not the, uh, the countless Evo qualifiers. Fourth place finish on the grand stage. None of those, thi none of those things, right, mean anything. Just the fact that I make way more money than Tevin, despite the fact that I have way less viewers. Sounds kind of pathetic when you really think about it as a whole, doesn't it, Phil? Just saying. <laughs> DSP News. Challenge and missions. Um, a major scandal broke a week ago about the corruption of Ivy League. It was one of your funnier vlogs topics in the past. Uh, dude, people don't believe me about this shit. It's 100% now proven that the whole thing has been a scam to begin with. The kids that were getting into Ivy League College half the time weren't even qualified to be there. They were getting in because their parents were paying their fucking way for it. There were entire systems put in place. Dude, you have a college degree and I'm stunned that you have it. Because you're certainly not qualified for anything that has to do with business. Not at all. Think about it this way, ladies and gentlemen. Just to kind of prove, not really prove, but to kind of cement my point. Phil, Phil Brunel, Dark Side Phil, DSP, Dark... Dave, uh, Axe the Pig in a Stupid Hat, whatever you want to call them, is failing at something that 13, 14, 15, 16-year-olds come in and make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing after a year or so. I want you to think about that for a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a, a 17 or 18-year-old right now that is about to hit a million subs on YouTube. That has multiple, if, yeah, has at least multiple sponsorships with Fortune 500 companies. <laughs> Excuse me. Probably hasn't even graduated from high school yet, he or she. And college is already paid for in full. Money's in the bank. You know what I mean? Able to buy themselves a home before they even get a college degree. You know what I'm saying? With even more long-term opportunities that the, are, that are afforded to them. I want you to think about that for a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people on Twitch who've been there since the beginning. Who weren't quitters like Phil. Uh, like Phil who didn't go ahead and run off when it wasn't immediately prof profitable for them. Who stuck it out, you know, year in, year out. Built an audience. Built a positive rapport. And now are considered within the top like 100, let's say 100, top 100 streamers on Twitch. The people that Twitch really look out for. I don't know if the number is 100, just go with it. Let's say top 50, whatever. Let's say 100, fuck it. Um, that are being looked out for. While Phil abandoned that because he couldn't, because the money wasn't good enough. Now, 
ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to put it out there that I don't know if the stipulation back in, back in those days held up to where if you were a Twitch partner, you couldn't simultaneously stream on another platform. I don't know. Maybe it did. And if that's the case, then that is what it is. But then at the same time, though, too, look at what was more profitable in the end, in the long term. Twitch was. Twitch is where the money's at. Twitch is where all this is at. You know, this is where Phil wants to be. Phil has turned YouTube into an archive. Which means what, ladies and gentlemen? It means that all those years ago, he gambled on Twitch. Or he gambled on YouTube. He lost by his own accord. He's the one who fucked himself out of YouTube. He's the one who screwed himself out of that machine on a contract, forcing him to go back to Twitch. And now look at him. He still can't get a look. He still can't get anything done outside of being the butt of somebody's joke or the recipient of someone's pity. And even then, he doesn't know what to do with that. Someone comes in uh, on a raid, Phil panics, and automatically puts the stream chat into sub only mode. Someone comes in and hosts him almost within a half hour, 40 minutes, maybe not even 40 minutes. Within a half hour, he's out. He's gone. He won't stream an extra hour for these people, sometimes 200, 300, 400 people who come over there, who, are, who you know, to the individual who was nice enough to host him, he's just out. Now, I remember someone was saying that for, especially for the bigger YouTube, uh, Twitch streamers, if you're not... Actually, if you don't have it actually programmed in uh, or patched in, if you will, to have you automatically be hosting somebody on the regular, I guess it'll randomly pick another Twitch partner or something along those lines. Makes sense. If that is the case, then, ladies and gentlemen, either A, he's the recipient of someone's generosity, or B, he was picked up at random, but either which way, he still didn't take advantage of that opportunity of exposure. He still ran like a coward. So what good was all of it? What it, what good is all of that generosity if you're not going to do anything with it? He says he wants to have more exposure. He says that he wants to uh, get out and do more. But then when the opportunities are brought opportunities are brought to him, he does nothing with them. He runs from them. To be honest, it's almost as if he's scared of having more people look at him. So it's funny how he hates the detractors, the trolls, and the haters. Because, oh, they shine him, they paint him in a negative light. But then when he's given the opportunity to shrug that off and prove, allegedly, that he is a better man than we give him credit for, he won't do it. He runs from the opportunity every single time. Seems a bit awkward, don't it? I don't know. <sighs> Starting to shake it off now. Starting to shake it off. <laughs> DSP News. Pay to win. Pay to get in. I mean, I've talked about this in the past and people basically said, oh, Phil's a conspiracy theorist. I firsthand experienced it. First hand, I experienced this. You know? I, when I was in high school, had a bunch of extracurriculars under my belt. So, you know, volunteer work. I was in multiple clubs. I was the valedictorian of my high school. Okay? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, now, keep in mind, Okay, I'm not the I'm, I'm not the deepest of Phil lore, right? I, I, I delve I delve into lore, don't get me wrong, but not like this, like this particular point. So, have any of you guys heard anything about Phil volunteering for anything back in high school at all? And I'm talking now. I'm speaking to those who uh, either are very deep pig grudge connoisseurs or those who have actually been around for a long time. Do any of you guys even remember any of that? Now, Phil being part of multiple clubs, excuse me, wasn't Phil like a rebel? Wasn't he some fake-ass Polish fucking James, wannabe James Dean running around with his little leather jacket and shit with a bunch of other alleged misfits? Because he says that the group he hanged with in high school, they were like all like oddballs. Like one guy should have been playing football and this guy was supposed to be doing this and that guy was supposed to be doing that. But you were part of multiple clubs now. And you were valedictorian, which who knows how you were able to pull that shit off. Huh? There are some people who get... There's some people who get scholarships and don't have to do any of those things. Either academically they excel, or they 
um, excel in athletics. All the extra shit that you're talking about just seems, well, just like that. It seems extra. I'm not saying that people don't do it. I'm just saying it just seems extra. On top of that, it, the way Phil's explaining it is it makes it sound like he only joined these groups, these clubs, so it could give him a better shot at a scholarship, which is what I'm assuming. And I'm not saying that that's not a prerequisite. What I am saying is, is that you didn't do it under general, under a more genuine mean anyway. So in turn, you probably have to ask it regardless, which in turn is probably the why is probably the reason why it didn't pay off for you. You shouldn't do a good thing and the expectation is going to come back to you. I don't know. Well, now we're starting to get into that preschool shit. <laughs> you should already know that. But I applied to a few Ivy League colleges and everyone de declined me. And when I went to my faculty advisor and asked why, because I said I put in the work. You know, I did everything you asked me to do to get into these colleges. I've got the grades. I'm the valedictorian of the freaking school. And they basically said, well, it's because you're white and you're not rich. And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, it's because you're white and you're not rich. If you were white and rich and you didn't need financial... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what student counselor told you that? I, I'm going to have to call bullshit on that. I don't believe any student counselor is going to tell is gonna tell that to a student. You know what I'm saying? Now, now ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> from what I've read... And from talking to older people, if this was back in the, like, the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and if his complexion was a little darker, maybe. They might have told him that, but I, 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 mm, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. You guys really think that a counselor is going to sit Phil down and be like, oh, yeah, because you white, and because you ain't rich, you can't go to the schools. Uh, huh? Really? Is financial aid, student grants, are these not a thing in Connecticut? <laughs> is this is this not something that's afforded to people from the mean streets of Connecticut? Is that what that is is that what I'm being told here? Is this what's being explained to me? <laughs> oh, so oh, Jesus Christ. Pig Road story times are the worst sometimes. They really are. Lady, you probably would have gotten in. But you need financial aid to afford to go to these Ivy League schools. And even though you have all the qualifications of someone who should go to one, you can't get in. You're not in that elitist class. And that's just the harsh reality of life. And I was like, wow. Because there were actually two kids from my, my high school that got into Ivy League schools only off the basis, I hate to say it, of their race and the fact that they were on a sports team. That was it. That was the only, their grades were nowhere near as good as mine. They didn't do anywhere as near extracurriculars as mine, they, they, but they got in. Here. Wait, 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 wait. Now, okay, so here's my next interesting question. How does Phil know this? Like, how, how does Phil know this? If Phil's supposed to be on his grind, you know what I'm saying, keeping his grades up as Val Victorian, you know what I'm saying, doing all, the, participating in all these clubs, right? And, uh, and, you know, basically doing what he has to do. How does he know that? Because no counselor would div would divulge that information out because they wouldn't have the right to. It's not like Phil can be like, well, what about those two guys over there? Tell me what they're doing. They, they wouldn't be able to tell you that. So how do you know? It sounds like an assumption. And it sounds like an assumption that comes out of ignorance. And you all, and ladies and gentlemen, we all know what happens when the pig roach talks out of ignorance, don't we? Jesus Christ. Let me take a sip. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, by the way, there were also a couple other uh, kids in my school who were very smart, and they, one of them was salutatorian and rich and got into an Ivy League school. <laughs> now, yet again, to just to further drive my point home, Phil, Phil Brunel, DSP, Dark Side Phil, Mr. I Can't Manage to Play a Video Game on Stream, and manage the chat at the same time. Too hard. Can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Can barely walk and chew gum. Was able to keep all his grades up, participate in all these club activities and whatnot, do all these extra curriculums, and also keep track of three other students, at least right now, as of right now, was able to keep track of three other people and what they were doing, not only their grades, their extracurriculum activities, what they were doing inside of work and outside of school, 
so they could get into the proper schools. That's what he wants you to believe. And if not that, that means his guidance counselor was basically giving up personal information to other students. So it's one of the two. Which one is it? Is that how they do it in Connecticut? Like, is everybody just fair game and I can just walk into any school and be like, hey, I need the file, the, the student files of Phil Burnell. Can you give me that? Oh, sure. Just a second. Here you go. Uh, you, you need some... You need a driver's license or something? You need some ID? To, do I need to prove who I am? Nope. Oh, well, all right, then. Well, make me make me copies of all this, then. Is it really that easy? <laughs> is that really is it really that simple? I don't think so. I'm pretty confident that it's not. Hmm. Okay. I guess this will be an interesting point of conversation later. Because it's amazing how he can juggle all of those things when he was, you know, a teenager, when he was in high school, and now he's completely worthless. Amazing. So I'm not, even, you know, I'm not gonna go too crazy here about this. I'm just not. I'm seriously not. Um, but the bottom line is the whole system of education in the United States when it comes to university is a scam. It's a money making scam. It always was. And it's meant to number one, make tons of money, and number two, keep this kind of elitist class at the top of the game. Because the bottom line is, it doesn't even matter if you're at the top or bottom of your class, if you go to an Ivy League school, you're going to get a good job out of school. Just because you went to an Ivy League school, you're now in, in this elitist class for the rest of your life, where you're going to get employed, high-paying jobs for the rest of your life. And it's terrible that now, now finally, finally, after how many years of it being this way, the scandal finally breaks and it's revealed, oh yeah, it was like that all along. No shit, I knew First that. things first. The, the scandal he's talking about, which I'm not even going to delve into that deep, but I did take a moment to look at it. Some chick who's a YouTuber, whose mom is some, whose, whose mother is something, right? She's like a, she's like a TV personality and her father's like some type of designer or some shit, something along those lines. He's someone important. Um, basically tried to get her and her sister into a very, very, very good school, right? And they paid... Something about something like half a million dollars to do so. Now, granted, when it's explained how they did it, it, I mean, it, it basically was just outright bribery instead of going through the proper channels as people normally do, which leads me to believe that both of these individuals don't exactly talk uh, to their friends much about anything that they do because in those type of circles with that type of money, People generally tell you how these things work so people can avoid situations like this. Let me give you an example. The Is the system completely corrupt? No. Is there corruption in any and every system? Yes. But the whole system isn't corrupt. Not everybody's looking to cheat like Phil did or like Phil could have if he was in that position. Not everybody does that. Now, this might been might have been the situation with this uh with these two parents here they may have not have known you know what the, how the system worked and maybe their friends weren't the ones that cheat the system so maybe they didn't know how to go through the proper channels which seems weird kind of sorta but whatever just because you're rich doesn't mean you're not stupid to be honest it, it is what it is you know what i'm saying so with that being said because <laughs> you can be intelligent and still be incredibly stupid um but anyway so anyway, they basically got caught up in this situation because they paid somebody to basically kind of to basically hit it, use a use a term to basically hit their kids uh, academic files with some gold dust. And it came up a bit inconsistent and someone picked it up and whatnot and they couldn't explain it away. And then this whole scandal broke. Now, the whole situation is with this with this uh, YouTuber is was her and her sister compli uh, compliant in the situation did they know that they were that they were participating in this scam and being that one of the sisters was being brought to the school on an academic scholarship despite the fact if you see her i doubt she's seen anything that had to do with uh with, with anything that had to do with academics ever maybe an aerobics class if that it would it seems kind of odd that's what they're talking about but this is one scandal, and if it's not even really a scandal, because it'll fade away rather quickly. 
there's too much money on the line. There's too much this and that. You want to give me? Let me give you guys an example. I will. They don't want. Nobody wants this. The school doesn't want this. The city doesn't want this. The state doesn't want this. I and mean, definitely, you don't want the federal government. Don't want to look at it. Doesn't want to look at that school and go back to the hundreds of thousands of graduates who have gone through, who come from privilege, and see if all of their shit was legit. It completely shits on the school and its credibility. This one thing, you can walk away from. You can't walk away from it if someone decides to deep dive into it. Now, are there going to be some investigative reporters out there looking into it and shit? I'm sure they are. And most of them will be discouraged, or most of their bosses will be like, it's not. It's a non-issue, whatever, and move on. I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm giving you guys the reality of a situation like this. Is there going to be an investigation? I'm sure there will. There should be. And eventually, these people aren't going to jail. They're going to get hit with some fines in, in the story. And now, it's up to the kids whether they want to go to school and live with the stigma of it, but maybe actually graduate and, you know, do something legitimate. Or, they choose not to go to school and they just live under mommy and daddy for the rest of their lives. Either which way, that's the only way it can go. But Phil Brunell talking about this shit because it blew up on Twitter means not a goddamn thing to anything. Period. He thinks that this right here is going to be the final uh, the final vow that breaks that's going to change the system. Shut the... Corruption is corruption. There will always be. Just like in every community, there's going to be some type of corruption. There's going to be somebody in every group... That's going to that's gonna be looking for an angle, who's going to be pulling some shady shit, that's going to be doing conspiring against other people behind their backs. It's just how it works. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just how the system works. Well, not how, it's just how the system is. It's not even about how it works, it's just how it is. It is what it is. Better men than any of you who are listening to this now have tried to change the system in multiple ways. And it almost never works. Or at least if it does, it doesn't work in the long term. It is what it is. I'm not saying you have to live with corruption, and I'm not saying you shouldn't call it out. And don't take what I say as being discouraging and whatnot. If you see something wrong, you should call that shit out. By all means. But what I'm saying is something like this is going to get skewed on by. It is what it is. Look at the hazing, that hazing situation that they had um, in colleges a couple years ago. You don't even hear about that now. And guess what? The hazing still happens. It's a tradition. Anybody who's gone to college and been part of an armada of any type of way, shape, or form knows it. You've gone through it. It doesn't, they may have changed it up, but it still happens. It's symbolic. It's what happens when you're part of a fraternity. It is what it is. And whatnot. Do people take that shit way too fucking far? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. But it's, it's what, it's just what happens. Let's go. And I fucking knew this, that rich people were getting into these schools by paying tons of fucking money to do it. I knew that, but no one, you know, whatever. I just, I'm not going to go crazy here on the stream. I'm not, no, no point to even going crazy about it again. It is what it is. That was a long time ago. Doesn't really matter anymore, right? At least for me, so. Ah, uh, the salty tears. Salty, salty tears. Oh, I got to take a sip. And Big Boy Bites cheered and said, what is your best birthday memory? Oh, jeez. I went to a comic book store one day with my parents and the Wolverine figure was there. And I turned to my mo mother and father and I said, guys, listen, I want that action figure for my birthday. Now, so here's the thing. <laughs> kind of glad I was able to talk about this. When I originally heard this story, yeah, I thought he was like 12 or some shit when this happened. Turns out this idiot was 15. He's He was 15 when this happened. He's in his late 20s at this point, and you're going to hear him basically have an attitude about it. Think about that. Oh, please. What I would ask you, I've never asked you to do this before. We know how rare that figure is. We know we've been to stores endlessly, and we've never seen it in the flesh. It's finally here in front of our faces. Please buy the figure now. Hide it from me for whatever, for months until my birthday and give it to me on my birthday. And so like one week, two weeks, three weeks in a row, they still didn't buy it, right? Week four, we go back. It's gone. 
So my birthday came and passed, and guess what? My parents go, we're very sorry, Philip, but we couldn't find the action figure. I said, I told you to buy the figure. Why don't you listen to me? Like, it was such a no-brainer. All they had to do was buy it then. They could have been it forever. I would have never bugged them for it till my birthday. I knew I was going to get it on my birthday. Because they didn't buy it. I didn't get it. I did eventually get it, but it was the second run. And, of course, now it's a year later. Do you really think that something I wanted a year ago is as valuable as, you know, then? but then I was already starting to move into other stuff. And, yes, I see someone asking in the chat. Yes, my parents did have the money to buy it. They were just fucking stupid. Oh, because I mean... Look, just an ungrateful bastard. I mean, really, just an ungrateful piece of human shit. Seriously. Seriously. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, for some of you who are getting ready to have children, if not, if you already have children, if you're about to have a child, or if you guys, or if you're thinking about having children in the future, think about what it would be like if you spawned that. Now, for those of you who already have children, when you look down on the faces of your children, imagine if they were going to grow up like this. That's a scary sight. And yet, and yet, this man right here believes his existence is so great that he should be acknowledged for everything that he says. If he's right, then he's going to gloat about it. If he's wrong, he never said it. And if he's going to act like an insufferable twat over a fucking action figure from like 15 plus years ago, if not longer at that, well, at least at least 15 plus years at the time that he, he made that one recording, just imagine how he feels about it now. But more importantly than that, if you couldn't let that go 15 years ago, you'll never let that go. How do you raise a thing like that? Seriously, how miserable of a piece of shit that you must be that you had held on to that for that long and never got over it and was still that butthurt about it. After all those years and all the money you made, you still felt the way you did. And in turn, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why he hoarded as much as he did in that condo. He bought everything to his heart, his heart's content. Everything that he couldn't have when he was a kid, he made sure that he could buy and have in abundance as an adult to fulfill some pathetic little need to feel loved or wanted or important or whatever. And now he's got the nerve to ask children, not too far off, some of them, not too far off from the age he was when he asked for that Wolverine figure for money so he can live the life that he still wants to live because he can't do anything else because he's still the miserable little bitch crying on his couch about a figurine of a, an action figure that he didn't get 15 years at that time, 15 years ago. DSP News. Toy for Christmas, I'm some kind of like an entitled brat. Oh, give me a toy, give me a toy. That's that's a tough one, and the reason I say that is, um, you know, ever since I became a working adult, basically my birthday has always just been kind of a normal day to me. I've never really had the opportunity to celebrate it and turn it into something special. When I was a kid, uh, my parents sometimes would throw me a birthday party, and I think I remember a couple of them. I remember one was at my local arcade. Didn't he have a week-long marathon? Or, sorry, didn't he have a week-long celebration? For his birthday in 2018, he celebrated it for the whole week, didn't he? Just, I'm just saying. I just want to throw that out there. And they had gotten pizza. It was like a pizza party at the arcade, and everyone was playing games at the arcade, and that was pretty fun. Um, shit, you know, I honestly, like I said, since it's been, since my birthday has basically been just kind of a regular day for me for so long, I can't even remember. You know, Snorper knows, right? If, if you think about it, and this is just playing devil's advocate, but it's still kind of funny. What if ever since that birthday that he didn't get his little action figure, every other birthday after that just became meaningless to him? He let that one birthday screw everything up moving forward, and he could never let it go. 
So despite all the money he spent, he spurged on himself and everything, I already talked about that. But despite all that money that he spurged on himself and everything, he still couldn't fill that hole. So, excuse me. So now he just, he treats his birthday allegedly like it's a normal day, despite the fact that last year he celebrated it for a whole week, if I remember correctly. Um, all off a piece of fucking plastic. With some paint on it. I'm sorry, I know it's a Wolverine action figure, I'm a Wolverine fan, but in you break it down to brass tacks, it was that that figure was gonna probably be lost at this point anyway, if he actually ever got it. He's gonna take it out of the out of the actual plastic, he's gonna play with it. He's a kid, you get that. It's not it'd have been worth nothing. In a couple of years he had lost it. Or he had thrown it away after one of his temper tantrums or some shit because mommy wouldn't give him another piece of cake after dinner. You know what I'm saying? Who cares? But Phil cares. But in reality, who cares, really? Birthday related memories, um, you know, that are associated with it. What I would say is last year was pretty awesome because Kat made me that amazing chocolate and peanut butter cake that I ended up eating over the course of like two and a half weeks because she made a giant cake for me. And obviously I wasn't gonna eat a ton of it, so I had like a piece a day. That was really awesome. Decadent as hell, but man, it was delicious. Um, like I said, this year, she didn't make me a cake because we're out of here tomorrow. What, what's the point of making a cake if you only have a... Wait a second, wait a second. The only good memory you have about last year is not the money that was given to you, which he did make a decent amount of money, uh, maybe even more than decent, was a cake that Kat made you slash bought for you from the store that you ate over two and a half weeks. I would assume it was stale once it got to the end of that, but that's... Uh, that's just my personal opinion. I don't have a whole lot of faith that you know how to store food properly. Um, that's That was the shining point of last year's birthday celebration, huh? Some cake that she made you, allegedly, that you ate over two and a half weeks. <sighs> it always comes back to food with you, Phil. <laughs> it always comes back to food with you. You can't make a genuine memory if it's not food related. Amazing. Ugh, DSP News. Eat it. So we actually got this little mini mini cake from a local grocery store. We're just gonna each have a piece of that tonight. So. Oh boy, Emerald Six gifted us up to Snort Burnell. Gee, thanks, Emerald Six. That guy's such a nice guy. Look how he's curling his 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 fucking lip up. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> so hateful. <laughs> so hateful. Okay. Dark Spirit Snort has invaded. Nice. It's obviously a troll. Snort. What an asshole. All right, and for those who are complaining about post-nasal drip, perhaps you should suffer it. Because they're like, why is he snorting? Because I have post-nasal drip, and if I don't, I'm going to choke. It's the only way to clear out my sinuses. If you have an issue with it, you should probably talk to God and ask why he gave me post-nasal drip, because I didn't ask for it. I woke up this morning incredibly uh, stuffed, congested in the head. I spent the greater part of the last hour and a half trying to clear out my sinuses, it's life. So either you deal with it or shut the fuck up. Because I've been doing this for over 10 years and had this issue the entire fucking time. And if you have a problem with it, you probably maybe should have realized I had it sometime in the last decade. What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. Oh! Easy to eat. Oh! Phil's a faggot. Phil's fat. Phil's a loser, Phil's a beggar, Phil's a racist, Phil's a scammer. DSP is a pedophile, DSP is a thief, DSP is a greedy fuck. This guy's a bitch. I have a micro penis. Oh boy, so there we go on that. There we go on that. <laughs> He's so angry. He really is. He needs to get some exercise. He'd feel better. Either that or he could exercise with Cat. That would, you know, that might make him feel better too if he knew what he was doing. Anyway, 
ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening in. So, uh, I guess we'll wait for his monumental return next Sunday. Uh, maybe it'll be eventful, maybe it won't. <laughs> I'll probably be late going over it either which way. But, uh... Um, unless it's something really exciting, but uh, I wouldn't put too much on that. Like I said, the best that we could, uh, the best we could hope for is a flare-up of gout while he's over there. <laughs> that would be funny. Either which way, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's it. Like I said, I'll, I'll wait and see what you guys think uh, in the comment section below, and we will uh, we will address that as we need to. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening in. And this is DSP News, always late, never breaking, unreliable coverage that you cannot count on. Oh, yes, the GTG Network and Productions. For the Snort Report, I'm your host, slash anchor, GTG, and I'm signing off while still trying to wake up <laughs> in the broadcast. Oh, boy.